Blog Talk Radio. Hello, welcome to another episode of Real Life Radio. I am Desiree Michelle, and I'm here with my super confagulistic, expialidocious co-host, Jerry Durant. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Des. I'm excited about today. Me too. I have been totally looking forward to this show because this particular subject is always fraught with juicy awesomeness, and I absolutely love who we have on this week, so I think our listeners are in for a treat. So I'd love to welcome all our listeners, live and archived, and also to invite you all to get into the chat room and participate live in there, or if you'd like to call in and participate that way, you're more than welcome to. The number to do that at is 1-818-514-1045. And yeah, join in the conversation because let's face it, who doesn't have a relationship issue to talk about? <laughs> So without further ado, Jerry, who do we have this week to help us navigate through and explore the juicy, juicy topic of authentic relationships? Mm. We have a fantastic lady on with us today. Her name is Carol Lewitsky, and I can't say enough of her. I swear I could go on for the whole hour about her. She is just an extraordinary individual. I absolutely love and adore her. We had an immediate connection the first time we met at a Jennifer Huff um, event in Calgary. And she just glows. She is extraordinarily beautiful inside and out. She's the mother of eight amazing children, and I... I can't wait to meet them. I just I feel like I need to, I have to go for a visit one of these times and just, you know, meet her her family. Um but yeah, she's just rocked my world. Ever since she's come into my life, I have such amazing gratitude. We've connected on Skype a number of times and every single time we just uh she like I can see her aura. Her energy is amazing and beautiful. She's so connected. She always seems to know exactly what to say. She's an intuitive healer, a massage therapist. Uh, She does Reiki, and she's also just recently been certified as an awakening coach with Jennifer Huff. And I had the privilege of working with her, and she did a bit of coaching with me. And I could the energy and the transformation and just the shift, just in being in her presence, you know, whether on Skype or not, was awesome. And we always seem to be connected regardless. So I'm I'm actually, I, I can feel my heart kind of pounding at the beginning of this show. And my face was even starting to go numb. I thought, well, this is really interesting. That doesn't usually happen where, like, my <laughs> lips and my face was starting to tingle when the music was playing and before, you know, before I was um, going to introduce her. So I thought, wow, something big. This is, it's just going to be... Mm. One of those shows that will just, like, activate stuff in your body, move some energy, and like you said, relationships. I mean, talking about letting go of obligation, expectations, and just cultivating these authentic relationships. What that That's what life is all about. What a juicy topic. So, Carol, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that you're here with us today. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Desiree. I am beyond excited to uh, have this conversation with the two of you and anybody else out there who's uh, feeling energetically connected and wanting to hear what's going to be said. I am really thrilled about the topic. I think freedom within relationships is is very, very cool, and there's so much to be said about it. I, Yeah, I can't wait to get started. Thanks so much for having me. Yay! Oh, well, let's you. dive in. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, you haven't been on for I'm a while. And last time it was parenting, so you you'll have to kind of fill us in on a little bit about your journey and um and your journey. Yeah, I, I could say yeah. that that <laughs> January was when we were last together, and it so much has shifted since then. I can start by giving a bit of background as to living in a completely different 
way of seeing freedom within relationship and how that was defined for me not that long ago. I would say it would have started when at a pretty young age when I started thinking that if I wanted to be accepted, loved, and make things work, in quotation marks, in relationships, that <laughs> as long as I, yeah, as long as I would do all the right things, then I would avoid conflict, and I could essentially make everybody around me happy, and that would make me happy. Because even quite young, I remember seeing my parents in conflict, and I felt that I understood what my father was trying to say, and I understood what my mother was trying to say, and it was literally situations where I would ask them both to come to the kitchen table. I'm probably no older than 14, 15, and I would act as that their mediator and Whoa. feel like I needed to be there to make sure that it would work between the two of them. And I kind of carried that way of thinking into my adult life, that as long as I did it right within my own relationships, then I would be able to avoid anything uncomfortable, essentially. So a fear of pain. And so I just picked up books. I mean, the first relationship that I felt need I needed to be proactive about was for the man I would I would marry. And so I picked up all the relationship books I could get my hands on. And even more so when I met my husband, I was like, okay, get on top of it now because the seven-year mark is like just seven years away. <laughs> you know, all these myths <laughs> of relationship wow. cycles. And I read and I read and I put into practice what I read. And I felt that... Um, as long as I as I would stay on top of that homework, then everything would be fine. And essentially, it did bring what I expected and what I wanted to see, and that was a conflict-free marriage. And I'll, I'll get to that later, but then I started having children, and that was now my new, my new uh, relationship with my first and then my second and so on and so forth. So definitely got all the books out, read every everyone I could get my hands on, and I would find myself living it to a T, like just reading and then applying it to my life. And this would help prevent the eventual the eventual uh, eventual scenario of having children that are disrespectful or get out of line or... Um, get out of control or do things that totally go against the morals that you pass on to your kids, so on and so forth. And um, and then my other relationship, and major relationship in my life was God. And I focus on spirituality and what that should look like and studied my religion and, and studied my faith and focused on doing it right between me and God. But the one relationship I completely neglected all along. Even when I was communing with God, I would like see him as separate. And the one relationship I neglected was my relationship with me. And mm. what happened with time is that there was constant dishonoring of myself in order to attain that goal of having the good relationship the perfect relationship, and essentially the results that I would want to get in the end. And this this eventually just built up anger within me, and anger that I could never put my finger on, because as far as I could see, I felt peace with everybody around me. I had no conflict. I was the master of keeping peace within friendships, within, within my marriage, with my kids, and yet I still felt such deep, deep anger and resentment. And eventually, through different life circumstances, and I mean, God, the universe, is so good at, at just pointing things out to us in a gentle manner, incessantly, just will continuously with patience, like point us in a different direction. And But when we don't listen, the 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 nudges get a little bit 
tougher and harder and more uncomfortable and like we are loved that much that it it'll just get so uncomfortable and so for me it translated into extreme migraines i went years with i could be weeks with debilitating migraines and we now know <laughs> that physical pain is so related to emotional and it's beyond just the physical that there's always and now I understand too that our body is there as a guide so every time I feel something physically I know that it's trying to tell me something so I guess the turning point for me was that uh, I well came across Jennifer Huff and went to Peru with her and had a lot of one-on-one with her when I was out there for two weeks and when I came back, I took the Personal Masteries of Awakening course. And in that, in that time, I was able to see the thing is, prior to coming, meeting Jennifer, I had been through four, almost five years of intense mental torment where I was being faced with with new realities that was challenging everything I had built up to be my reality of what was perfect within relationships. And so when these these scenarios would come up, it was challenging me and pulling me to such extremes. And when you don't know what's going on, when you don't realize that it's just things that are coming up so you could look at it and let it go because it doesn't serve anymore, when you're caught in that vortex of confusion and mental torment, how I would explain it is that I created my own prison within my own mind. And yeah. what I, and to me, that's the opposite of freedom, right? So I basically was feeling this inner battle between what I now can language to being the ego and my inner guidance. And the ego, sometimes I had such polar opposite conflicting thoughts and opinions that it was almost to a point where I was wondering if I was schizophrenic because in one moment I could believe something so firmly and in the next the complete opposite and I'm thinking, oh, which one is me? Which one is is me? And when you don't when you don't have a point of reference of what's actually going on, it it's very confusing, it's very scary and so I came upon this understanding through Jennifer uh, at the right time because I felt really lost, confused, and I didn't see an end to the the torment that I was living within me. And so to recognize now that the ego is it's a part of us, but it's separate from who we really are, who we remember when we think back of ourselves as a child, and this authentic being that knows that there's nothing to fear there's nothing to worry about and when I was able to come to that place of seeing that I don't need to give my ego any power or any importance or any value then it just naturally falls away there's no process involved of excavating or trying to to fight it off or to you don't even have to feel anything for it. You just come from a place of neutrality where you say, oh, that's coming up. Does it serve? No. And then you return to a place that actually is authentic. So how that impacted my relationships with my children, I'll begin with them because ultimately they have been, always have been, and always will be such a pure barometer of and a pure expression of what's authentic. There's nothing phony in children. Mm-hmm. And so when we we allow ourselves to see that they are such a pure, beautiful example of what we as adults have forgotten in ourselves, then it's exciting all that can be learned through them. When we can look at them and realize that they have wisdom that we've, ultimately forgotten about then everything that you the answers to any question you have like is really in their heart in their soul and I um, was driving with my daughter the other day and she she's 13 years old and I we were having a conversation and in a moment where I was not acting in my highest I said 
a negative critical comment about one of her siblings and she looked over to me and she said that's that's so not cool mom like that's not nice what you just said and it's easy to to jump into the you're my child like you don't talk to me that way or just to to create this superiority because the ego gets triggered in moments like that it's it's definitely humbling to if you see them as as less than but when you can see your children as complete unique and valuable souls the same as you and I are then mm-hmm. there's no defense needed there's no fear that jumps in and says oh, I have to make sure she's not correcting me because she might lose respect for me in the long run. Are you kidding? What an amazing conversation that presented where I could say, you're right, that that was so out of line, what I said, and I'm sorry that I would even utter Mm -hmm. those words. And it gives her permission not only to screw up herself once in a while, because she will, but to know that it's okay and then to just bring authenticity back into the conversation and yeah to and so validated uh, too well what in the end if that's that's how it made her feel then that's great i was seeing it more as my own opportunity for growth and how easy it is to discount our children and remove them from the equation of getting insight in our own personal growth and it's easy to look at our children and and see them as broken like oh i have to fix that behavior i have to correct that before it gets out of hand when in fact they're not broken whatsoever and they don't (laughs) need fixing certainly not by us and what i looking back when I would read all those books on parenting and I would go down on my knees and look into my children's eyes and say, I know you're feeling frustrated right now and so on and so forth, like the books tell you to do. But inside, Mm -hmm. I I was completely in turmoil and completely out of sorts with myself. They weren't hearing the words I was saying. They were just feeling my energy and my emotional state. So you see how you can have all the skill sets, but if you if you miss and skip that one relationship that is the most crucial, and that relationship is with yourself, then the rest can't function optimally. The rest of the well, relationships in yeah. your life. That's and so huge. It yeah, is, it's and it's stop liberating. Almost to just like take that in for a second, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, me doing the parenting from heart. I, mean, I can't even tell you the countless parenting books that I've read, and 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 even teaching to get down, you know, and you know, and acknowledge how they're feeling and da da da, right? <laughs> Without really taking well, into account the energy and what where I was, and how I was feeling, and what they were really getting from that interaction, right? Not the words, because I think. Right? I think a lot of times we get so preoccupied with doing it right for their sake and we forget that we should be not worried about doing anything right per se, but just re- relearning, remembering who we are so that we can actually be authentic in our delivery of whatever mm-hmm. it is we do. Do it authentically, because not right. Exactly, because it looks different every day. Some days... It's stepping out of line. That's the best you could do that day. And then you have a conversation around that. How awesome. It taught her how to how to recognize in myself that I, I do want to bring awareness to the way I speak about the people that I love. And so when it comes to being responsible for for the outcome in our children that doesn't even it doesn't even fit in the equation anymore there is no outcome to get you just be a parent to the best of your abilities disregarding the, putting aside how they turn out that's really none of our business the only thing that's our business is how i am right here right now with the individual that's right in front of me 
Now, they're mm. not a little project of ours or a, a trophy to be showed off at the end of the 18 years. And I'm seeing that firsthand because I've got the entire spectrum. I've got my Patrick who's graduated and different ways of thinking on where is he going for post-secondary. We get asked, and guess what? He's choosing to work because he wants right now because he wants to do some more searching within himself of who he is and what direction he wants to take. The next child maybe will know early what they're called to be and what they want to get into. And each one is such an individual that it's not up to us to decide what the results should ultimately look like to yeah, make we're not us to mold them. No, exactly, or to make like, to make us proud. There's nothing to do with us proud. <laughs> nothing to do with right? us. Right? Yeah. Like No, exactly. It's just creating a safe space for them to explore who they really are. And gosh, like if we can start tapping into who we are ourselves, that's an even greater example than trying to help figure things out for them. They they're okay. They're quite okay with or without us. Like it, it we're there in their life right now, so we be the best that we can be for them and that for me ties back to like the freedom of just the freedom of just being the best parent that you can be for them and never making them feel disempowered of their own destiny and of their own life. They have mm. that wisdom within themselves. And and even beyond that, accepting that our role as a parent is not privy to just us, that there are multiple individuals within their life that will impact them possibly as much and sometimes more. There's a, a student within my coaching class that every time I would speak with him, I would see my oldest son. And they ended up having a few coaching sessions together where he coached my son and my son was able to open up and speak some really deep issues with him and feel safe to do it and it's nothing about us not being good enough parents that he couldn't come to us to speak to us about it. It's about us seeing that we all play a role and if you keep your eyes open you'll see that certain individuals come into your life and they're meant to play a role in your children and to hoard the responsibility is is not only not productive for the child's development but it's also arrogant as a parent and pro- and pressure on yourself it's stressful as a parent exactly and, which is yeah, like, the opposite wow. of freedom well and You're one again of my putting yourself go ahead yeah no it's just What's been coming up for me over and over again is is, is parental guilt. Because <laughs> that's kind of one of my theme words of this lifetime, it seems to be. Like, you know, the shame and the guilt, and which stems right from my childhood. But, right. but that I seem to, you know, that seems to be something that, that I still have some challenge around is, you know, feeling guilty about, like, not spending enough time with my kids or the quality time or not. You know, like even though I I so get everything you're saying, it's it's so funny how I haven't I I really see how I haven't integrated it. Like I I so agree right. with it, I so get it, but it's like, but how how do you do this? Like it's such a such a new way to to approach parenting, and right. you know what what does that look like, and how do we just like <laughs> yeah, how do you do that and and release that? That guilt, because mm-hmm. I can feel just, you know, if we, if I could really get this, how much it would lift, you know, the pressure and be, you know, really free me up more, free my kids up to be and express, you know, all of our gifts and, and, and see them, mm-hmm. like allow them to emerge. And, you know, so I'm feeling the hugeness of this, but at the same time, you know, right away this guilt's coming up because, like, oh, I'm doing it wrong, right? <laughs> Which right, like and that, that you hit it right There's on no the right nose. Wrong, but that's what comes up, mm-hmm. right? When people, yeah, absolutely. And I know in my parenting class, the same thing. You know, I'll, I'll talk about different te- tips and techniques, and right away, 
I'm not doing it right. I've messed up my kids. Oh, my God, now what? You know? And then there's this guilt and this pressure that we put on ourselves that we've got to be better. And, well, we've got to be better in our connection with ourselves. Like, so I don't know if you can Absolutely. Help that, you're that you're totally, <laughs> you're completely hitting so many important points. Like doing it right, that's, that's such a, a huge uh, identity and something that we hang on to because it makes us feel safe because as long as we stay within the parameters of what that actually means, what's a fun exercise is to actually sit down and write down what doing it right looks like. Okay, now try doing that with eight kids. It's going to look different every time. And so when I think of my conversation with my daughter in the van, when I essentially perceptively wasn't doing it right because I wasn't charitable in my words, and yet it was perfect because it gave an opportunity for this amazing conversation to occur. So if a person can define what eliminate those words completely, doing it right, doing it wrong, that would be a huge mm-hmm. start. Another and area that I could and, yeah. yeah, the another area I could bring up is is what makes up an ideal family time. Like what defines what good quality family time is. Come spend a week in our house and you'll see that family looks different practically every hour. Like this weekend, it was my husband with our four of our older ones going camping, me being at home with the three youngest and my oldest. Well, it sounds like our family is being split up. No, our family is just looking different on those days. And it's an amazing opportunity for me to connect with the little ones. They're all in bed early. Then I connect with my oldest son, who is home. We rented a movie with his buddy. And it's something I can't do when the other ones are there. It's just, and then would you, would a person say, well, that doesn't fit with anything I've read in a book. Well, guess what? There's no book that's been written for our kind of family. And guess what? There's no books that, that's been written for your family. At the end of the day, we have to write our own book. Mm. Yeah. And that has to feel... That has to feel great. That has to be us looking at it and saying, I am giving my all and I am being authentic in my interactions with my children, with my partner. And on the subject of partners, that, that was also something that that we've we've definitely gone down interesting paths. <laughs> Because if we go back to the beginning of a relationship and what I defined as ideal or perfect was just us to like finding this man that fit the profile of the least least um opposing qualities between the two of us. Ha ha ha, that's so funny. The more you get to know them the more you realize. But you know, we'd walk hand in hand and we'd grow spiritually in synchronicity and oh well, guess yeah. what? That's just not what happens. <laughs> and and it not quite, and yet it's still perfect. I mean, it, it's it's going to be the same within all relationships. A little bit different within a, a contracted relationship, which is what I would see marriage as, is y- you can you can uh, forget more quickly to to keep authenticity within the relationship because there's there can be this sense of security that, oh, well, we're good to go. We never treat friendships that way because those come and go. And so, yeah, I think probably the most powerful conversation I ever had with my husband was the day that I said to him, you know that contract that I signed with you 17 years ago? It It really means nothing to me. What means everything to me is that every day I wake up and I choose to be with you. And to me, that means more of an authentic love than saying I'm staying with you because the contract says so. And it took him off guard. He didn't like necessarily like that conversation in the moment. And that was my first attempt at at trying to be more real with him. And from there, it, it became this couple that never had any 
any um, opposing discussions or arguments to now we were we were facing more uncomfortable conversations. And the more we had these uncomfortable conversations, the deeper our relationship got. Because mm. he, he was seeing me come out of this, this phony, baloney, like, person that I had my, made <laughs> myself to be just to keep this, the peace within our marriage, to have this seemingly, like, illusion of happiness. And... Now we were just tasting of every color, and of course there was resistance, and of course there was confusion on my part too. Does that mean we're not meant to be together? And it's okay to even go there in your head. It's okay to always be reevaluating. We do it with friendships. We do it. We should be doing it with all relationships. If if it's not in your highest to be with someone, then there's there's decisions that need to be made made. And that goes with friendships, that goes with family, with with parents. I hear some coaching clients talk to me about their sense of obligation with parents. And sometimes it's an abusive parent-child relationship that goes way into adult life. And yet they still hang on to this sense of obligation. Mm. What if someone else is meant to help that individual? What if we were given a biological family and really we have a soul family that we chose to be with. And by staying stuck in, in a relationship that is suboptimal, you're preventing the soul family from even surfacing in your in your life. Yeah, well, they won't even that's, recognize you if you're not being authentic. That's right. And so sometimes love and its higher level is to accept that you're not the one that's meant to help that individual, even if it's a mother, a father, a sibling. Obligation and responsibility shouldn't be words used within authentic relationships. Then so it's just like stop not right there, Carol. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Breathe that one in. I just want to, like, pause for the listeners and for me because I think that for so many people, and myself included, that's the the knife edge where, you know, the the line drawn between, well, what does it mean to be authentic and what does it mean to be committed or steadfast or loyal or, you know, all of those things, right? And it's like, well, how do I decide if this relationship might children or my spouse or my best friend or whatever like because it's like well the challenge is the gift you know the reason why I'm struggling so much in this relationship where it feels like it's dragging me down or whatever is because it's it's a gift for my learning you know it's it's a gift for me to learn obligation or to learn commitment or whatever right I mean there's all these thought processes that happen and I love what you're saying there about like let's let go of this idea of obligation because it's not authentic. Love isn't obligation. And for myself, and actually even on last week's show, this was brought up a little bit, right, Jerry, about the going the extra mile. Well, that's, you know, because you love someone, you'll go the extra mile. And, and that definition for me as well, you know, it's an obligation I don't want to do is how I define the extra mile, right? So, you know, you really love somebody if you're in a semi-state of obligation and irritation because obviously (laughs) you're going the extra mile, right? Because you feel like you have to do so, yeah. (laughs) So I love, yeah, I love that you brought that up. And I, let's explore that if you can. Yeah, absolutely, because there's quite a bit to explore in this area because when we think of expand on. Of our children, I mean, okay, so this is where if we go back to your relationship with yourself. So when I was starting to face my own truth and start speaking it and having tough conversations with people that I love, it's a slow process because it's like 35 years of doing things one way or maybe less than that because when you're a child, you're, you're completely transparent and authentic. But whatever the case, it was easy to project on the people outside of me when I was still in the process of trying to figure out 
and trying to remember who I am. And so there, there's irritants and there's right down to your relationship with the weather. It can be impacted yeah. where it's like this summer is so crappy and it's so cold and it's so it's raining and where's our summer the next day it's 25 and I, everyone around me is saying it's too hot <laughs> so i'm just yeah. wondering if we if the relationships around us are if we're not ready to go inside of ourselves it's so easy to just be pointing and blaming everyone around us for our lack of happiness within mm-hmm. And what I noticed is that as I started honoring myself, so earlier I talked about this like intense anger and resentment that I felt inside of myself. What mm-hmm. I finally figured out was that I was, because I kept thinking, well, who, 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 who outside of me am I angry and resentful with? And it was, in the end, it was me. I was angry and resentful of myself for all the times that I had dishonored my truth, for all the times that I said yes when I should have said no, under pretext of I've got to hang on to the identity of the, the generous Carol. I've got to hang on to the identity of the martyr mother and wife. I've got to hang on to all these identities because if I let anybody see beyond this, this unbelievable image I've been able to keep up, maybe I won't be loved. Mm. Ultimately, we all do that. Like, we all have a fear of not being loved, and that's where ego steps in and goes, I'll help you. I'll create all these identities so you could just live behind all of that, and then you'll be loved. And essentially, your your inner guidance and your authentic, authentic self, it never dies down. It's always there, and it's constantly just saying, here I am, here I am, don't forget about me, until eventually you start going back there because you're done living the cyclical cycles. And as I started just rediscovering and remembering and honoring myself again, everything around me has become less and less irritating. And I'm not saying every day in every moment that it feels that way, but if I hear this voice in my head that I used to be confused of the schizophrenic mind or the opposing opinions, I can I can now, with practice, I've been able to now recognize what is ego and then say, that's not mine. So I won't give you power. I won't give it power. And then I return to that place of who I am. And so, for example, doing this show, the ego could quickly come up and be like, who do you think you are talking about this stuff? Do you, do you think you actually have something to offer? So many speakers know so much more than you. They're so much more eloquent in their words. You're going to trip up. That's all ego. That's ego trying to keep me small. That's ego trying to prevent me from shining my light. So the dishonoring of me would be to actually listen to that voice and then call you guys and say, I'm not doing the show because I'm not good enough. Now, to honor myself would be to say, this isn't about me. This is about us having a conversation and if it moves energy for listeners, awesome. If it moves energy for one listener, it was still worth it. If it moves energy for no listeners and I get a re like a reminder of all these things that I just never want to forget ever again because I don't want to live in that prison anymore, ever, then it was still worth my time. And so that's where you can detach from the end result within relationships within every decision you make is completely detach from the end result and to just do what you feel called to do in the moment and in the end that's that's what brings satisfaction that's what that at the end of the day you can sleep and know that you, you you're doing what you came here to do Mm, I, that's huge. Yeah. So really the only obligation and responsibility we have is in the relationship with ourselves. Well, or at least, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just never wanting, because the rest, so going back to seeing people around you that irritate you, I mean, I now still face the the continuous tasks as a mother 
uh, eight of them, all eight of them got stomach flu in the winter, one after the other. So it's not like suffering ceases to exist. It's just that you don't even see it as suffering. You just see it from a neutral standpoint of saying, this is happening right now. So whether I'm mopping the floor to make it clean or mopping up puke, <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just see it as that's what I'm being called to do right here, right now, and do it with love. And when I, I get, uh, I, a couple months ago, I moved a lot of energy on from going, I went to Florida and did a weekend with Jennifer called Get Out of Your Own Way. I love that title, Get Out of Your Own Way, and just be, and it was intense and powerful. I moved a lot of energy, and within a week, I I was sick, like so sick, because sometimes it has a physical effect on your body, and my head was just ready to explode. I'd never felt such, in, I've had migraines, and this was totally different, and I knew it was just energy moving. And, and when you can understand it from that point of view, it still hurts like hell. And when my oldest son came to see if I was okay, I told him, find the nearest gun because I just wanted, to, I wanted it to end. And then I said, okay, never mind, get an Advil, see if that helps. <laughs> and and I, I was able to move through that knowing that it's just my body showing me things in the process it it was still painful but i wasn't resisting it i wasn't fighting it and i wasn't feeling a victim of it and i just knew it would end at one point but i didn't have my eye on that i just let myself feel it and listen to my body for for guidance because your body is really the best guide we all know that if you don't listen and you let things perpetuate without that it it turns into illness and sometimes really extreme illness and sometimes that's the journey for some of us it has to get to that point and then there's change that gets made but it doesn't have to be that way if we honor ourselves honor our body listen to our inner guidance then everything else around us doesn't need to you don't place judgment on it anymore you don't sit there and say, okay, we're not getting along. Okay, now it's been two months, we're not connecting. Oh, my gosh, now it's been, well, that's all with expectations in mind that by this stage, we've been married 20 years, we should be like soulmates and whatever that means and connected every day and just like fireworks flying every time I kiss him. And <laughs> it can be that way. And if it's not, there doesn't need to be judgment on it. It's just... Am I feeling called to to be within this relationship? And if the answer is yes, then you keep moving. If the answer keeps being no, then you make decisions. There's not a right way or a wrong way, but it, it's coming at it from an angle of non-judgment and just saying this is how it is and where do we, where do we go from here? And within friendships, it's it's the same thing. There's a really close friend of mine for 20 years. We're just inseparable. Anything goes on, we call each other. And last year we we had a con- few conversations and it just felt like such a struggle to just even like basic communication. And it was complicated. And we just both decided to, Heart and go our own ways and a year later we, one of us felt called to call the other and we spoke and it was with fluidity again and we're back in in the flow of that relationship why did we need that year who knows is it important to know but we listened rather than trying to force a relationship that's so complicated and full of struggles just to to allow Mm. breathing space and have that freedom within the relationship to just say, be who you need to be because that's perfect. And I want to let myself be who I need to be because that's perfect. This is where I'm at. and, And it's not about anyone needing to, to, satisfy the other's needs per se, because everything that you need is within you. And then so you actually you had a conversation with her about those feelings and and was it a you know a decision between the two of you to let go for that year? Well, 
in in our case, we're like away. so energ- we just energetically connected that I, I felt it was mutual without us needing to speak it through. Oh, in a different okay. relationship, it might need to be an actual conversation. It just felt natural. We both did it. There was no ill feelings. Because when you push something that's not working, that's when it becomes complicated and ugly. Even in divorce, right? There's so many times where you see it gets pushed and pushed and pushed and forced and it it gets ugly. And other scenarios that I'm seeing surfacing more and more is just by the time they make the decision to part ways, they're best of friends. And why can't it be that way? To just have such Mm -hmm. a mutual honoring and freedom within the relationship to just say, it's okay, This this is the path that life is taking me on now. And mutually moving in that direction. I mean, you can't control the other person's reaction and way of being. But I'm going to say that when you start changing yourself, when you start re realigning yourself with your authenticity, you'd be shocked and amazed how everyone around you starts doing the same. Yeah. It's so cool. Without you needing to even utter a word of explaining what you... Like, sure, you give them the heads up of what you're going through because it's, it can be a little disorienting for the people in your life if you're all of a sudden speaking your truth and you never have before. It's good to kind of give them the heads up. They don't think you've joined some <laughs> occult or something. But um, <laughs> otherwise, yeah. it's it's just so cool. I'm seeing it in, in my own husband who I could easily have judgments on him of like she she's like never picks up a book on spirituality and it it just he has different ways of growing i i i go through different processes i i do things my way and then he he moves energy in his own way it just looks so differently than me that we're not you're never going to be in the same place we don't have those expectations on friendships so like I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with her because we're not at the same place spiritually. That that would make no sense. Mm-hmm. You just you, you can never because it's all such individual journeys for us, right? That's true. Yeah. Absolutely. And even if it moves energy, and and there's still this sense of it. it it just would become a conversation you would have with the individual that you just, it's okay to part ways. Otherwise, there's there's not freedom within a relationship. There's strings attached. Mm. Big stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so that's, for me, the, the freedom component comes down to just living in the present moment and that looks so different from one day to the other and from one moment to the other and we just have we i find just having grace for yourself and and compassion that it's it's not gonna it's not gonna look what how how we label a perfect relationship whether it be with ourselves with our partner with our children and just having an openness mm. for for the or better, because when we have an idea of what we want it to look like in the end, what if what the idea we had for the end isn't even, it's usually never as good as what what God or the universe had in store for us. If we could feel that much freedom to just say, do with it what you will. I'm just right now going to take it one step at a time. And what that looks like in the end, when we even have intend intentions or vision boards, we could be limiting the end result. It, it could have, it can be so much more if we just yeah allow it that, to that, be. Yeah, that was what was coming up for me because there's, you know, still um, from the secret and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people that are. You know, well, what do you want? You need to know what you want. You need to set goals, and you need to have, you know, start with the end in mind, and all of those, you know, all of those things that that uh, a lot of us have really come to believe and depend on, and and you've got and do your vision board and your visualizations and all that kind of thing. So I'm just I'm wondering what your 
thinking is on well all the all, all those that. things there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it again it's just beautiful methods and and it's brought us to where we're at now and where we're at now it it it, it can take us to the next level of just really having such a dance with life that you you let the flow come through without any expectations whatsoever and just living in in the moment of magic like my husband like i said it's it's frustrating cuz i feel like i need to do um well i don't know but i always felt i needed to do so much work to move forward and for him it's just always something that's come naturally for him to just trust trust that the universe has your back and he packed up the four kids and headed off with the tent trailer and went to a campsite quite a few hours away (laughs) with no other campsite Mm -hmm. as a backup and he's like we're gonna get a spot nothing reserved nothing just got there and and uh sure enough they didn't just get a spot they got the spot they would have wanted out of the entire campground and they arrived like saturday afternoon so highly normally unlikely but to trust life that much that we were so being taken care of every second of our life every minute of our life our relationships with our with everyone in in our life our children our friends our family our parents there's nothing to fix it's like when we put that pressure on ourselves that we need solutions we need a plan we need a we need a backup plan and what if it ends that way this is what i'm going to do and if it goes this way this is what i'm going to do and i know all about that i would like spend hours it would take me Mm -hmm. hours to fall asleep every night because i would lay there making sure i've got a game plan for everything and you can imagine with this size of a family how that would be easy to worry about their future worry about their health worry about every single decision and then worry about the parenting that we're doing and the the example we are as parents like we're when as we're going through our ups and downs and and to be at a place where now I see that everything is totally being taken care of all I have to do is just show up show up and just be me in every moment and again I'll say it it looks different every day because there's so many factors, the amount of sleep you've had or not had. If you're hormonal, the weather, the, well, maybe not the weather, but like, you know, they say the solar flares affect us, <laughs> energetic mm-hmm. influences. There's so many factors that how could we even come up with a definition of what even being authentic me looks like? There is none. Right. We just every day has to be completely going back inside of ourselves and learning to or just just tapping into that that child within and that's yeah. what my kids remind me every day they don't put work into just being them they just are them and they don't moment. worry and stress and moment. exactly every time we worry and we feel that we have to have a game plan for everything that completely removes us from the present moment that's thinking about stuff that hasn't happened yet and could essentially not happen and so we could either live our life loving it and enjoying it and then that thing happens or we could worry about it and still not have prevented from happening worrying has never been a preventative measure no, what you worry about comes about. <laughs> you're almost, you're like bringing well, up, you're, you know, you're giving a focus, and <laughs> so I think sure. you can actually draw it to you, especially things that we obsessively worry about. It's possible. But. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, just never making our little ones believe that they they know less than we do because they have their own interior wisdom, they have their mm-hmm. own inner guidance. And I've even had a conversation with my older ones and said, even if it comes down to doing something that goes, something that we've taught you that completely doesn't resonate with you, still 
like trust that inner guidance. Yeah. That's probably hard for some people to hear, sense. but I just I, I think of yeah. my own because we're not perfect as parents, so there's going to be times where we do things that that we don't want them to learn from us. Definitely. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wow. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here. Uh. That's been a really full hour. <laughs> and no kidding, I can't believe it. I'm looking at the time going, what the heck? <laughs> that just flew by. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but if we could just get that, like just that moment to moment and take that pressure off ourselves. And what, like, one of the questions that I often ask myself is just, um, you know, what would love do now? Or if I love myself, you know, what can mm-hmm. I do? Or is this expansive? Does this feel like it's expanding me or, or more contracting? Is this bringing more love mm-hmm. into the world or less? And just kind of making decisions based upon that. And, and yeah, like this constant check-in, like about what I'm going to eat even. You know, I, one time I decided I was going to be vegetarian today. But, you know, I don't even do the whole blanket things anymore, like where I'm, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this forever. I'm going to work out three times a week. Or I'm gonna, it's like, okay, what, am I, what about today? <laughs> what about right now? Mm-hmm. What feels, right. you know, and am I still vegetarian? Yep. How about tomorrow? Am I still? Yep. And then it's like, no, I'm gonna have some meat now. That's what feels like. That's what you're good feeling to called to do. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that it's it's totally... such a nice, more free way of being. Like, wow, not pressuring mm-hmm. myself or beating myself. Oh no, I said I was gonna be a vegetarian, and now I, I ate meat. <laughs> right. That's right. Because like... when you make rules, then then when you get off track, perceptively off track, then you feel like you failed. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. there doesn't need to be rules, yeah. Yeah, and Very Bruce cool. just posted something in the chat room. He said, uh, he said he just shared a photo um, on my Living from Heart Center page, and it says, "Love is like playing the piano. First, you must learn to play by the rules. Then, you must forget the rules and play from your heart." Beautiful. Mm. I love that. Yeah. That's very so, cool. Yeah, and kind of what we were talking about, you know, the vision boards, the setting goals, the, you know, maybe that's great. That's great, and mm-hmm. that's what works. And you and you do that until it doesn't work anymore. Absolutely. Until you kind of go, mm-hmm. you know what? I don't think I'm being called to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. But judging people that are still doing it or that aren't doing it, or you know, like as the the right and wrong way, there isn't. Right. There is not. It's just. And yeah, more importantly, ourselves. When when we learn to not judge ourselves, you'd be amazed how judging others starts dropping away. It's, yeah. uh, it has to start with us. At, at the end of the day, it's as simple as that. And everything around us is doesn't feel like such unsurmountable situations when when you're able to... Yeah. To find yourself again and say, oh, there you are. I've missed you. Yeah, it's nice. Hmm. Very nice. Yeah, transform every cool. relationship when we, just, when we just really focus on, like you said, our own inner guidance and that relationship with ourselves and, and what it, what's authentic and letting go of. I love mm-hmm. that, you know, talking about the identities that our ego kind of, gifts to us to keep us safe and to make sure that, you know, that we're loved. And <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, thank yeah, you, and you it's know, served, really nice, but <laughs> Yeah, it's served its purpose for the time, and then you just realize, wait a minute, what am I protecting myself from? What What is there to fear? If I really, truly believe that the universe has my back, that I'm being cared for, watched over every second of my life, then then there, there's no protection needed, and then you're able to yeah. just leap in. I mean, I hear stories that's just unbelievably um, humbling and fills me with gratitude when I have sessions with clients and to see the level of vulnerability they're able to to offer and for their own sake of learning to remember who they are again and in some situations it's just mind-boggling that with so little love seemingly so little love from the people that surrounded them in their childhood and going into their adult life these extremely 
difficult, painful situations, and yet here they are in front of me, and all I feel is this emanating love coming from this being that was never taught to love by the examples mm-hmm. in his life, his or her life. And how does that happen? It's because you yeah. never were alone. You constantly had connection with with creation, with divine wisdom, with God. And it's it just moves me to, to witness that. And it really confirms, if ever I have a doubt, that there is truly... There's truly never a moment where we're on our own that we're completely and and I think if we're really honest, all of us can just look back at really tough situations and even if we didn't have support from people around us, there was this inner strength that moved us through it, yeah, and that that can always be a point of reference to go back to and remind us that there there truly is nothing to fear that we we take that leap and it's uh it's incredible to to rediscover yourself is is a beautiful place to go because you as you learn to love yourself again you start loving everyone around you from a completely different perspective and you just you see that we're we're all in the same boat. We're just just trying our best to to just get through what life throws at us and to feel compassion and no judgment for how others around us are and, and how we are sometimes and it's very liberating. If there's no more finger pointing, there's no more blame because I don't know. I had seen a quote the other day that there's a Hitler and a Mother Teresa in all of us. <laughs> and it's just up to yeah. us to choose where we're going to go. And uh, and it, it, when you think of that, it just makes you see that yeah. we, when it's we look at others' we... actions. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, it, it is. It's so, it gets so easy to point fingers fingers a lot of the time until we kind of realize, you know, it, I mean, it's all us, and we, we've we been all of that, and we've, <laughs> like, it's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's amazing, and just learning where to, where do we want to put our focus, and on the mm-hmm. love, and on the beauty, and, and I'm, I mean, I, I feel such amazing love and gratitude, like, uh, for you and for Des and just all these people that are on this journey with me and that I know I can, I can, I can just fully, I'm safe, right? I'm safe to just show up and be myself and there isn't that judgment and it's amazing. And I just so wish that for everybody. And yeah, the world is, it's transforming and it's, ugh. And I'm so excited <laughs> to be on this in a it body is. on this planet right now. Mhm. It's it's a very exciting and I, I see that for women it's been a a more a, a path that we we maybe lean more easily into, this personal growth and spirituality. And I'm seeing that more and more men are entering that that scene and that's exciting and encouraging because mm. I have six boys in my bunch and <laughs> to know that there's male leaders out there that are embracing the the human the beautiful sensitive and authentic side of themselves and not being scared to to show up and encouraging and setting the stage and showing the way of breaking down all these old identities of the tough guy and the you got to hide your feelings and you got to be the protector, all those other identities that fall under a man's um, role. And I'm I'm excited for my boys that they can they can have people in their life. And I I saw in my own husband who's been highly guarded emotionally how as he's seeing me take the steps forward of of letting myself be seen 
fully mm-hmm. be seen that is just giving him permission to do the same it's it's seeing me do it gives him a sense of of feeling like well then maybe there isn't anything to be scared of maybe that the protection i had put up is not needed anymore and i get feedback from my own boys that they see that in their father and wow dad is like so much more engaged when he talks and it's it's nothing i've said it's nothing i've lectured or taught him or asked him to read it's just when when you be authentic yourself it gives permission for everyone else around you to do the same it's just as simple as that Mm. That's such a beautiful way to end the show, actually, on that note exactly. Like when you give yourself permission to be authentic and you show up that way, it gives everyone around you the same permission. And like what a gift. It is a gift for yourself and a gift for the world. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I like the same thing. Oh, I cool. just feel all nice and warm and, <laughs> and happy. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Ladies, for for this hour together. Yeah, so love and appreciate you. And yes, thank you for sharing your time and your wisdom and just your authentic, beautiful self with us. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You're very mm. welcome. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> yes, a beautiful hour. A little more than an hour. We did, but we did well. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a lot of energy moved. There is a lot, a lot to this. So wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, oh, you're, um, you're very welcome. Yeah, and thank you to all of our listeners. So appreciate you all being here and your love and support. So happy to be connected to all of you. And next week we have Jennifer Huff that we will be interviewing. And uh, so yeah, one of Carol, well. Carol's mentor and and mine and amazing. It's going to be another awesome, awesome show about really being more free and free to be ourselves and express in the world and dance and play and and love. So very nice, awesome. Yeah. Yay. So how we didn't say your website though, Carol. I want to make sure that we. Um, let people know sure, how sure. they can get in touch with you and, Absolutely, and your yeah, uh, I, amazing coaching abilities. So <laughs> fantastic! Yeah, yeah I my web page is www.expandforward.com. Uh, so that's expandforward.com, and same name for my Facebook page. So forward slash expandforward.com, or I can be emailed at carol at lewitsky.com. I'd love to hear any feedback or any any uh, insights that on the conversation we had today. I would love to hear from listeners or anybody out there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yes, and I love that title, Expand Forward, and it's, yeah, so true, so expansive and beautiful. Mm. All right. Thank you, both of you. You're very love welcome. You so much. <laughs> Love you too. Enjoy Have a wonderful the rest of your week. Day. Thanks, you too, Bye. ladies. Okay, take care. Okay. Bye-bye.